right. Well, thank you for joining us uh, on the Shantae Golson Show. We have a special guest on today, and I'm going to introduce her and give her all of her accolades, uh, accolades rather. And uh, we have Dr. Sandra Lewis with us on today, and she's a clinical psychologist and personal energy strategist. And she's here to help us entrepreneurs as well as uh, executives in understanding how to achieve um, high energy, high performance, as well as she caters to women in terms of helping them to sustain their well-being and avoid burnout. And we all know too well about burnout, and this is the purpose of this channel, to prevent burnout as well as to overcome burnout, to help you to be more productive, to help you to have better uh, mental wellness, to help you to build wealth, profitability, cash flow, and the list goes on and on. So welcome, Dr. Sandra Lewis. How are you today? I'm well, Shante. Nice to be here. Well, Very nice. Yeah, I'm glad to have you here. We're going to have some strong conversations as we're in the same uh, line of uh, area. Yeah. And so, therefore, I know that you teach women evidence-based formulas of transforming, uh, limiting beliefs, emotions, and behavior patterns. And I imagine that those in itself get in the way of helping them to be the best that they can absolutely be. Now, you do this through something called uh, energy management. So tell me about the, the process of personal energy strategies as you are teaching them about energy management yeah so energy management is really essentially a strategy for helping us bring our best to the people and projects that really matter to us so if we think of our lives and everything that has to happen we can't do it if we don't have energy and we want to mm -hmm. not think of our energy just as our physical energy, but mental, emotional, and spiritual energy as well. So energy has at least four dimensions. And if we give ourselves an opportunity to pay attention to those, those throughout our day, we can actually mm -hmm. be ready and present with mm -hmm. the things that really matter to us. Mm -hmm. So it's really about helping them take those thoughts that are kind of weighing them down and like taking them into the bad place and transform them into thoughts that actually help them be lifted up and have the energy to be present, creative, and build the businesses and the careers they want to build. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me of the executive functioning, how limiting you can be with your energy, especially if you have so much trauma, pain, chaos, anger, the list goes on and on. And so your executive function say, hey, 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 I can only handle so much. So we can be operating just off of 30% of what our ability is because of all those pain points. So <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so Shantae, I was, as you were talking, I was just thinking last week I attended a workshop on trauma and then its impact on the body. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that came up is that when we get into that, like, do, do, do trauma mode, like, oh my God, things are going to fall apart if I don't get, and we're just tight and holding. We're in the part of our brain that's just all about surviving yeah. and the part that thinks and that can be creative. And that is that brilliant woman who can add so much to the world is like, she's she's like hidden right right so you have to get out of that kind of trauma way of being in order to have access to those executive functions as you mentioned mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and especially you know those habits and those limited beliefs and you talk a lot about those in a way of helping women to be successful so tell me a little bit more about these habits and these uh, limiting beliefs i mean i have uh in my book i wrote about six or seven of them, right? Patterns that you see in people. One is the problem solver. This is the person everybody goes to and nobody ever thinks she needs any help. She's always willing to be there for other people. She's doing everything, taking care of other people and oftentimes not paying attention to herself, right? right. Oftentimes people will also call them the people pleaser. So mm -hmm. we get Pattern, particularly if we are in a corporate setting, if we are people pleasers, that, that gets people to like us, but then they don't really see our talents because we're always acting on other people's behalf, right? Mm -hmm. Another one is the kind of push, push, do it all, make sure you have all the ducks in the row kind of, um, well, the push, push, ducks in a row kind of person, right? Do it all, do it all, never stop, right? What I call like the robot on skates. Okay. Then that person 
never even allows themselves to, to, to take in the benefit of the work that they're doing. And I think one of the last ones I see quite often is this kind of perfectionist, right? This like yes. analysis paralysis, right? Mm -hmm. I just, it has to be right. You have to get mm -hmm. every little detail. So you never give yourself a chance to get out there and see how you can learn from even when you fall short or what you would call falling short. There is no falling short. You actually just got another opportunity to figure out something to make it better. Now, let me ask you this. In, in my discovery in working with uh, individuals, you can actually have a combination of what I call the emotional caretaker, which is everybody, uh, you know, they want to uh, have everybody like them. And really, that's just a mask. Plus the person who is um, this, this pretentious person that have to have everything correct. Now, when we talk about the combination of these two characteristics in a woman, what do you find uh, uh, the pros and cons, the issues, the, out, the outliers, the threats regarding this particular woman? Yeah, so let's, let's just even think about that. Okay. First of all, the person set themselves up, like they set up a mindset that they have to be there for everyone and they have to be perfect. And so they've almost put themselves at a loss because none of those things are really possible all the time, 24 seven. So they've actually given themselves an impossible standard and they're working outside. So all the energy that they're investing is investing in trying to please others. They are now beginning to lose touch with their own spirit's drive, right? Mm -hmm. Like what, why is your spirit in love with this thing you're doing? What's happening inside of you emotionally that makes you want to do these things? And once you start to lose touch with that, then your energy is like beginning to get bound and away from you and you're draining, right? Your own, your own mm -hmm. ability to connect to what you do. Mm -hmm. If we can't connect and be involved and sort of see how the work gives back to us, then we start to get drained and we're on that, those, one of those key aspects of burnout is that start, starting to lose that fulfillment, starting to disconnect from what we're doing. Um, and maybe even starting to get a bit like resentful of other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, and, and what comes to my mind is even on the personal side, think about a mother who has these characteristics and then have to come home and raise the children. Uh, one of the examples that I often see is this particular woman loses herself the con, right? Loses herself, put everything into her children, everything into her workplace, everything into helping family members who's calling and et cetera. And so this woman is depleted. She is drained. And so when I ask her, who are you? I'm a mom. No, no, no. That's what you do. Who are you? And then they finally realize that they have lost themselves. So with that being stated, this moves close into something that you talk about, which is self-care. So the challenges of this woman, this avatar that we set up in this conversation, the challenges of her having the ability to include self-care uh, and being a leader in her home and outside of the home, being creative, how do you help her? What are your thoughts regarding these challenges? And like this, this particular kind of woman often says, I don't have time to take care of myself, right? They'll often say that there's no time for that, except that nothing happens without you. So you have to have time for you, right? So I like to start them by saying, one thing is like, why would it be okay to do this for everybody else and not for you? That's a good question, right? To get That's them started, question. right? Like, why? Why would that be okay? Because you, you believe people need this care, right? You believe people need support. So then why would you deny that for yourself? And the other thing is to help them begin to see how simple things you can do every day can help you to recharge your energy, help you to be more present where you are. I mean, simply. Shantae, just if you were to, every time you took a bathroom break, you added two minutes to it, and all you did was focus on your breath. Mm -hmm. Two minutes every time you took a bathroom break. Now imagine if you went to the bathroom five times a day, now you've got 10 minutes of focusing just on your breath and going inside yourself, 
right? The mm -hmm. other thing that makes it easy sometimes to do self-care stuff is to attach it to something like it's called habit stacking. So when you know, when you take your shower, right, that might be a moment that you read something inspirational that you know helps to sustain you during the day. Um, when you take the dog out, you might say, okay, I'm going to go out in my sneakers and I'm going to walk the dog a little bit further away from home so I can get just a little bit of time to move my body and come back in, right? Mm -hmm. there are certain things that you can, um, excuse me. My apologies. Um, so there are certain things you can do to just add in, right, to make it easy for, your, for you to fit self-care in. So just by attaching it to small things that you do, walking uh -huh. a dog, little things you do in your life every day will make it easier for you to actually get a regular self-care routine. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to self-care, how do we know the difference between us beginning the process of being stressed um, versus burnout? Because while stress is a part of burnout, it is the other side of burnout. It is the initial point. So, so how do we differentiate that? What, what's the differences here that this woman can uh, identify for herself? Mm -hmm. So what's interesting here is that we deal with things that are stressful all the time. We, like in psychology, we would call those stressors, mm -hmm. right? Okay, I lost my keys. Oh, my car broke down. Um, now somebody's going to be delayed. So those are things that could lead to us to the point where we say, oh, this is a challenging situation I'm in right here. Can I handle it or not? So that's just every day. And once we decide we have the resources to handle it, we move through it. But if we get into a situation where we're chronically stressed, um, like I've worked with providers who've worked in different, like the HIV AIDS epidemic. So there's just chronic all the time, things dealing with things, right? When we get in, even like now with the pandemic, there's a, just an onslaught of things. If there are too many times when we feel like we don't have the resources to come, then we can start spiraling towards burnout. The difference between stress and burnout is that it's, with stress, we're actually looking for solutions. We're trying to figure out how do we fix this thing? I don't know if I have the resources, but maybe I can find them. But with burnout, if we've gone too long without feeling like we have the resources, we mm -hmm. reach point where we are actually emotionally and physically fatigued, we disengage from things, and we yeah. lose a sense of fulfillment. And at that point, we have sometimes lost the, lost the energy to even try again. Absolutely. You know, my story is about burnout, having multiple clinics and uh, mm -hmm. operating so, so many things over a, a large time period that burnout snuck up on me. Mm -hmm. It can do that. I didn't, I didn't realize I was burnt out. I know that there were moments of stress, but I have high stress levels. So it really doesn't bother me. Uh, but I know that stress is really getting to me when my skin turns red. So these physical elements, as well as emotional elements, mental <laughs> elements, they are all important for us to know. And I have categories of teaching people the five red flags of burnout. So in mm -hmm. stress is a very first one can you recognize your stress are your moods changing because i was i was irritated and didn't want to be bothered with staff if staff did the wrong thing that i taught them it would be you know uh while i wouldn't just go off off you know th there were just changes in me slowly uh to where i didn't even want to uh go to work i didn't I would drag my feet. Ooh, I would wish, ooh, I need about another three hours on lunch, you know, uh, or try to leave and not come back, be resentful over time. And then that just spiraled because what's going on the inside is going to show out. It's going to show out. <laughs> Definitely going to show out. And exactly what you're saying, that feeling of, I don't want to talk to anybody. If anybody comes mm -hmm. to my office, I'm going to do whatever I can to make them go away. That's mm -hmm. that disengagement that comes with burnout, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's everything you said, those like, the, yeah. and that's what the research shows. It's like those three markers that, hey, you now are so fatigued, you don't have anything to give, 
you've actually disengaged. You're not even present. Like some people even depersonalize. Like they don't even recognize their bodies, right? They don't right. recognize their body signals anymore, right? Like, oh, like that was hunger? What? Oh, shoot. I guess I'm tired now, right? So you start to even not recognize. And, you, and of course, there's no fulfillment. It's like there's no joy in your work anymore. Right, right, right. It's like, get out of here. And of course, you know, it, it was at a point, and I don't know if I've, I've told my story in my podcast, but I don't know if I said this. Now, it was to the po- a point that I didn't like my response to one of the patients. And I said, wait just a minute here. Wait a minute. I need to do something here or I'm going to jack up my name, my brand. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. But that is what, you know, I didn't go off of him. I didn't blast, but I was a, uh, wasn't was as smooth. I was rough. I was, you know. Yeah, and, well, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I, yeah. And in my burnout story, one of them, <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, just because we love like helping prevent it and people help people recover doesn't mean we're immune to it, right? Mm-hmm. So I, one of these times, I had gotten to the point that I had pushed myself so hard at work to help a project come to fruition. Like I got this colleague, she's trying to do this big thing. I'm going to do everything I can to help her. Like I'm on this team and I'm, I'm moving. I'm every day. I'm praying. I'm talking to my mentors. I'm doing everything I can to make this project go. Mm-hmm. And then learn that somebody had really undermined us. And I just, it took all the air out of me. I was like, I can't even do this anymore. I would get close to the driveway and I would feel so anxious that I was like, so whose body is this I'm in? Right. I don't know who this is. And I know I don't want to go in this place anymore. I never, ever, I don't want to go here. I don't, I don't want to know anything about this. So it was like, I couldn't even face the place that my workplace, I couldn't go. I didn't want to be there. Mm -hmm. So I had, I said, wait a minute. First of all, just realize what you did. You jump all in to help somebody else. You see that person we know, like we just talked about that persona, yeah. right? You're going to save, you're going to take care of everybody. You're going to make sure this happens. And you forgot how any of that was connected to who you are. So I took a leave. Mm-hmm. I, took a leave. I was like, yep, the only way this magic is going to come back to me is I got to come back to myself. Yeah. Yeah. I took a leave as well. I took a sabbatical actually and rearranged everything but that's a that's a story for another time yeah. you, you just feel like either i get to the point that i had to do something i knew in my mind if i didn't do something mm-hmm. i was going to destroy everything i built everything and right in that the miss it was slowly being destroyed anyway like a like dominoes being mm-hmm. you know, how they set that up it falls because they said, you know, I didn't have the energy to manage my staff. No. I trusted that what I taught them through years and years that they were doing. When I finally find a, a little bit of energy to look into it, because you ain't trying to look at documents. You no, we're not. Yeah. Read no email. You, <laughs> you, you trying to have put everything on all the staff. If I got yeah. it in body, let me just be there. And that's ridiculous, but, but that's what burnout really is. Yeah. Exactly. So I started kind of a little thumbing down because my money started being funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's, mm-hmm. so I looked at what they were doing and they weren't doing anything. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So I yeah. Lost, yeah. Yeah. So the first time I looked, I lost 250000 The first Whoa. And then, you know, so burnout is so huge and it's so varied and it's so emotional and it's so mental and it's so physical. And on top of that, guess what? I went through a breakup. I the same yeah, you, like you had a rapid fire. You had rapid fire. I know. Yeah. You lose track. You lose track of all your goals. Like when I look back on it, I was like, and I'm doing all of this to help somebody. And I lost complete track. I lost total track of everything I was working on for myself. I totally got into doing something, trying to help a project go, and then discovered that we didn't even have all the support we needed from the administration. And then I'm like, so we've done all this work? I've only worked on this for like a year and a half or more? 
And now it's just like dead in the water because somebody like flipped the switch because mm -hmm. they didn't feel like they wanted to support. And I was like, oh yeah, no, no, wait a minute. Let me pull back. Let me, let me get back to me, get myself back on track. Who, who is Sandra in the world? Right. Who do you right. want to be? Right. What did you come to the world to do? And, and I think that's how I developed this, 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 this tool I use called a one's question reset. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I just asked myself, what does this have to do with who I came to the world to be? Mm -hmm. I got, to, that's how, that, that was like part of me flipping. Like, why am I here? Mm -hmm. And what does this thing have to me, do with me being me? And if I can't figure that out, then I need to step back and mm -hmm. I need to listen within and I need to think about who I am and what I, what's coming from my purpose into the world. Yeah. And, and yeah. match to that. A lot of entrepreneurs and leaders, they are afraid to evaluate and afraid to make a decision to step back. But we have to look at if I'm not being productive, Am I going to continue to slaughter myself, my reputation, you know, my, my performance, my et cetera. And so when you're not meeting your outcomes, when you're not meeting your goals, we've got to identify some key elements here. So you share with me that you have some key ingredients. You have some strategies that will help them to increase their fulfillment. Let's kind of talk about that a bit. Yeah. So I think the first one is that, is that, that very question, like, why is this work important to me? Why am I in love with it? I mean, if you can first just center yourself and answer that question, why am I in love with this work? Mm -hmm. why, why, like, why do I even want to invest my energy in it? Because that's going to be your compass. There will be times when, it things like, when things are not going as well, right? You don't have as many clients coming in. You don't have, right? The promotion didn't come through as quickly as you wanted it to. There are going to be times like that. But if you can get clear about this work and why you love it, you can do it. You can, you can stay on it. And I recommend that you, that becomes something that you revisit. Like the first two minutes of your morning, every morning, this is why. This is why I do this work. Right. And if it feels like you're in a rough time, you can do it throughout the day. I think the other one in terms of sustaining yourself and having a sense of fulfillment is really looking for how the work gives back to you. So when you when you put something out, you do something. OK, so what did I get from that? Like, how did that come back to me? Sometimes for me, it's just a client might send me a little email and say, hey, you know, I really appreciate our session today. This really helped me. Like, hey, look, the work gave back to me. OK, mm -hmm. um, I think the other part of really being present and being fulfilled is paying attention to yourself. Yeah. And your own energy. Self-care really, right? you know, self part. You have, you know, and that 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 becomes a way of living. That it's not sort of a thing you put on the side and do like, OK, I ran, I ate my broccoli today. Mm -hmm. but really you sort of you feel like. This person with this big why in the world, in order for her to power that why, what kind of energy does her body need? And mm -hmm. how do you want to eat, move, sleep, and breathe to mm -hmm. give that body what it needs? Now, and, and that, those are excellent points because a lot of people just do not identify these other sources that help us to live relevant. You know, you, you got a, a, a entrepreneur or a leader who takes a break and go chow down at Golden Corral, come back and trying to figure out, ooh, well, why can't I get it together? Oh, I can't think. I can't focus. But I had to learn that there was a specific way for me to eat during the workday. And if yes. I did anything different, my energy was gone. Shot, right? Exactly, right? So you... And that's the, that's the important thing is starting to know your own body rhythm mm -hmm. because we have ebbs and flow of energy throughout the day. Right. If you eat so big and heavy in the middle of the day, right. By like three o'clock when all of us usually have that kind of drop, mm -hmm. right. Your body, you don't have much left. Right. But yeah. if you can make smaller, lighter meals throughout the day, particularly if you're really busy, you got a lot going on. Yeah. You want to keep yourself light and nourished mm -hmm. and then also use your breath move mm -hmm. around now i'll tell you one of my favorite things is a hula hoop i'll grab a hula hoop in a minute 
and do two or three minutes of a hula hoop because mm -hmm. I like I like it. I just I love the feel of it. I love right. It's movement. Mm -hmm. it's, it's playful, right? Yeah. So yeah. You might find a playful thing that you can do that adds some movement in your in your right. day. You also have office yoga. You have just a, a, a lot of things. So in your opinion, what would you say are three additional strategies other than what you've already shared? The breath, the hula hoop, or the physical activity, the uh eating light what are the three things can the audience take away to it to start the process mm -hmm. of regaining replenishing or maintaining their energy throughout the day mm -hmm. um i would say one is what i mentioned early is to attach a self-care practice to a to something you do all the time so a small thing habit stack so it could be this is going to be a moment when I read something inspirational because okay. I want to feed your spirit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when I brush my teeth, I'm going to read these quotes and you might just put them, you might have a few that you have on the mirror that mm -hmm. you read for yourself. Right. And so that's one thing the before the work day begins. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. So you want to start your day. I, I think a starting ritual is really, really important. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, attach something to a morning practice that you can do and then set a habit of taking breaks because recovery is key you really won't have the energy to bring the things if you are just at your computer in your in your in your doing your work just hour after hour yeah. so you want to have a pattern and most people say that if you sit past 30 minutes or so it actually begins to do some crazy shifting around your cholesterol levels right so you want to stand up and you want to walk around and you want to give yourself some recovery time mm -hmm. and then i think the other part of it is that you want to have some shutdown practice yeah. where you say this day has come to a close because our days never end mm -hmm. we are constantly like busy have a shutdown practice. And I'll, I'm gonna add just one more. Sure. Each day when you structure your day, look at it and say, do I have too many big things in here? Because we tend to underestimate the time it takes us to do something. So if we have one activity that take, we have three activities that take us two hours each, then we're gonna be drained. Mm -hmm. So you wanna spread those across your week and try to have maybe only one of those big like, two hour dive in activities in a day and then smaller things that you can get done that might support your other goals throughout the day. Right. And I will add two more to that. I would say you can go to my website, coach Shantae.com forward slash burnout and get my, uh, get your time freedom back PDF, which is my time management system that has been proven to help you get your time back. Literally, there's something that I developed out of my burnout. And if I would have had my system prior to, uh -huh. I would have lost uh, a lot. Yeah. Um, and, you know, in addition to have a, to your point, that close out time, um, I think it's important to close yourself off of work emotionally as well so get, so make a statement to yourself an affirmation to say this is my private time yeah. as evidenced by because that's what i had to 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 do to start separating yeah. that working with patients all day to my personal time so i would put it evidence by evidence by i'm sitting in my own car evidence mm -hmm. by i'm lying on my pillow because yeah. your brain will continue to to talk about what you need to do, uh, what you hadn't done, et cetera. And then be mindful about the concept of um, kind of flip my mind, but just just be mindful about the concept of you and self-care. I think that's one of the biggest pushes that we want to stress today. You are only one person. And therefore, if you do not put things in line that is going to help you and, and stop being afraid of doing things for you. Stop being afraid. If you don't have time for this call, tell your secretary, no more, no more calls. If your energy is drained, no more this. 
Right. And then also when we take talk about your to do list, ask yourself, which one of these items, if I complete, then I'll be happy with myself. Mm -hmm. dismissing the rest of them because if you can dismiss the rest of them with that question it lets you know that they may not be money-making activities yeah and also something you said about how your mind can keep going on and on about something and that oftentimes an easy strategy for helping people get past that moment when their mind won't stop yeah. is get let them get a sheet of paper and a pencil and write it all down just brain dump don't even try to censor it just brain dump and like less that writing that free writing right. for about 10 minutes mm -hmm. actually allows people to make a shift right and absolutely i do teach that it, it gives you a clean slate so that you can focus on whatever time it is it could be family time it could be you know community exactly. time. Right. Because then it's all a puzzle. Right. It's on a paper. And later you can go back and say, oh, I can take this and I can put it over here and I can do that. But now it's out. So you don't have to think about how to hold on to it anymore. Your energy is not going into holding it in your head. Right. And so what's happening? You're having racing thoughts. Well, you know, listen, Dr. Lewis, you have a book. And uh, where can people find your book and what's the title of your book? The book is Life in Four Part Harmony. Get everything in your life to work with everything else in your life. And it's really about, uh, and the book is on Amazon.com. You can okay. download the Kindle version or you can purchase the paperback. Okay. And so where can individuals find you if they want to uh, meet you on social media? So on social media, I have a Facebook page. Uh, it's called The Living Source. And also on Instagram, I'm at The Living Source. And on LinkedIn, I'm Dr. Sandra Y. Lewis. Okay. Well, uh, Dr. Lewis, I appreciate you being here with us. Um, it has been a pleasure to speak with you about the energy source that we all need as leaders and entrepreneurs. And so again, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Shante. All right. Well, stay tuned to the Shante Golson Show. We'll be back every uh, Tuesday. So next Tuesday, stay uh, locked down because we have some more special guests and special topics to speak about. All right, au revoir.